What is going on everybody? Welcome to Dylan Talks Tone. Uh, interesting video today. Uh, at least it's interesting for me because um, you may not know this, but in the mid 2000 teens, so I want to say we started kind of messing around with building guitars in like 2015, something like that. We've been making pickups since 2013, but in 2015 or so, we started messing around with building guitars and um, I was partnered with another company. They were doing some of the work for me, et cetera. Um, at that time and I built a bunch of stuff well One of my buddies called me the other day and said that at our local guitar center The very first one that I ever built was hanging in guitar center for 1500 bucks It's right here So what I did was I posted a picture of it You may have seen it on Facebook or on Instagram where I was just like, check this out, man. My very first guitar that I've ever built is at Guitar Center. Um, somebody should buy this because it's really, really cool. Well, somebody did buy it. And so what we did was uh, one of you actually called up Guitar Center, bought the guitar, and arranged for me to go pick it up so that I could kind of see it again, spend some time with it. Also set it up because it's very, very unique. Uh, I think there's really only, I know there's only one like this. And get this thing set up properly, kind of go through it, make sure it's good, and then I'll go ahead and send it on to the new owner. But we should take a look. There it is. So what you have here is a Tele build. Uh, back in the day, the bodies were getting cut from nothing, uh, you know, from a block of wood, but we were purchasing necks so you can see that it has a basically modified tele shaped neck this was our very first logo if you'll remember our kind of vintagey the the early dylan tox tone logo or dylan pickups logo before it was dylan tox tone was that um really cool green mother of pearl inlays here um I was thinking that this was a DAF humbucker in the bridge, but I just realized just now before shooting the video that there's a push pull here. So I'm thinking this is actually a center punch. And this is one of our flat six Telecaster pickups. Uh, one of our very early ones, actually very early. Um, but the magic, the coolness of this particular guitar is the B16 Bigsby Tremolo. What makes this kind of super, super unique is the fact that we have the Bigsby that goes from the tail of the guitar all the way up to where the bridge pickup sits, and it actually encapsulates the bridge pickup. This guitar is not actually routed for a bridge pickup. In fact, if you flip it over, there's no string through holes. Um, we made it custom for that. So, oh, and there's contours on the back too. So the body's all contoured and then it's got perloid binding. It's been played, you know? Um, and the thing about it though is this bridge is loose in here. So when you take the strings off, this will actually come out, it'll fall out. So I just totally messed up the intonation by doing that. But what's also very interesting about this bridge see if I can show you here, is this bridge is made to pivot back and forth. So it's actually supposed to go like this. So there's zero friction in this Bigsby system. So when you use the Bigsby and it's in the right place, it might not be in the right place right now, but when you use the Bigsby, let's see if we can get a shot of it. See the bridge just goes back and forth. So there's no friction with anything except for obviously at the nut, but as long as the nut is set up properly. I guess we'll go ahead and get rid of the fish. This is a Bakelite pick guard. Now, when I built the guitar originally, it had a mother of pearl toilet seat pick guard on it to match the binding, but I think I actually do remember, because this is one of my pick guards, so I do remember him calling me and saying, hey, can we swap it out? But there you go, it's pretty cool. Push pull, I didn't, I don't remember that. Um, one of the other things about this Bigsby setup is that because of the height of the Bigsby on the guitar, let's see if I can get a better angle on this. 
because the Bigsby is so high uh, and the pickup is actually sitting up above the guitar, that means that you have to have a neck angle on the guitar. Now, typically, if you retrofit a telly with this, um, you can buy an aluminum shim that goes in the neck pocket and fits it properly. But if you'll notice on this guitar, I don't know if we can see that there, but basically the, there is no shim in here. The neck angle is actually machined into the guitar. So I was trying to do things right, make them super cool. But that is Dylan Custom Guitars number one. Pretty cool. Let's go ahead and do some setup on it. Um, I haven't played it yet. I want to put new strings on it. Uh, we need to set the intonation. I'll show you how to do how we do that with this particular setup. And we actually had to custom make this Sorkin so that it would be okay with a plain G string, all kinds of stuff. There, this, this was a lot of work. This guitar was a lot of work, but it was actually number one. And uh, it's pretty cool. Uh, let's get it on the bench and we'll do some stuff. Okay, so I get it on the bench and the tuners are actually loose. They're like, no, nothing's tight on the back. Um, I don't mean the tuners themselves, I mean the locks, because these are spurzels. Anyway, so that, that's kind of funny. So let's uh, go ahead and get the strings off, and we are going to use uh, our Lizard Spit polishing kit for the frets. I'm gonna get the frets cleaned up. Um, if you go to Sweetwater, there's a link to this in the description below. If you go to Sweetwater, just buy the little replacement kit that comes in the little tabs, or the little bag like this, um, for five bucks, just whenever you're buying strings or whatever. Um, we're gonna take the fish sticker off. We're gonna polish up as much of this stuff as we can, although it looks really cool. It looks properly aged with the rest of the guitar because there's a little, you know, it's been played. So we might just, I don't wanna make one part shinier than the other, so we'll see. And then we're gonna go ahead and use our Lizard Spit uh, fretboard oil get this thing cleaned up we'll put a set of strings on this thing and then once with the strings are on i'm going to show you see because this bridge moves around so i'm going to show you how we set up a sorkin bow tie Okay, so if you saw uh, at the beginning of me messing with this Bigsby, you'll notice that it was super, super stiff. So one of the secrets to keeping a Bigsby in tune is remember that all we're doing with a any kind of vibrato tremolo um, is we're changing the length of the strings somehow, and we want them to return to pitch when we're done. So when we move it, we just want it to go back. So if you saw before I started messing with this, and I messed with it more off camera, but uh, basically just cleaning it and lubing it, um, it was very stiff. Like wherever you put this, it would stay. If that happens on your Bigsby, that means that you will not return to pitch because your, or you could not return to pitch because wherever you're putting this, it, it wants to stay in a spot. So what we want it to do is flop back and forth. We want it to be totally loose like this, okay? That's gonna ensure uh, better that our guitar is gonna return to pitch. Now there's a couple problems that could cause this. One, with this situation, it was lubrication of the shaft right here. This thing had just gotten so gunked up from lack of maintenance um, that it was just really, really bound up. So I sprayed rubbing alcohol in it, um, cleaned it all out, and then lubricated it with some really light oil so that now, see, it kind of just falls back and forth, nice and loose. So we'll put our dude back in here and now this thing will be, this thing will work, man. This thing's gonna work awesome. So now the next thing we need to do is we need to go ahead and set up 
our bridge for intonation purposes, which means we're just going to have to measure this thing up. But we need to put strings on it first. But before we need to do that, uh, let's pan over here and notice that Guitar Center must not check anything, okay? Because the nut falls out. So I'm gonna go ahead and glue the nut back in. Um, the frets are shiny, the fretboard is oiled, seems good, everything looks pretty good. Um, I got the white fish off of there. So I'm gonna go ahead and glue this back in and then we're gonna put strings on the guitar. And I'll give you a little, kind of a, a little hint about how to make it easier to put Bigsby strings on a guitar when we get back. I got the nut glued all back in. So first things first, just grab a piece of foam, anything. It could be a piece of a, I don't know, piece of a flip-flop, piece of a bathroom sponge, kitchen sponge, whatever. Just something squishy like that. And, uh, and then what I typically do is I take the end of the string and I just wrap it around my finger once like this, just to give it a little bit of a bend. So you just you hold the tension on it, right? And you just take your piece of foam and stuff it underneath there. Uh, and that kind of acts as a third hand so that you can then now go down to here to your tuners. You don't have to hold that string on. You still have to keep some tension on it. But now you can see what I mean. It just acts as a bit of a third hand. And locking tuners help. So we'll just add a little tension to that one. And this is a bunch of loose pieces right now because we don't have enough strings on the guitar. But that's okay, we'll get to that in a minute. And then I take my low E and I do the same thing. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is we're gonna set the string height. We're gonna use our handy dandy little gauge here. And we're gonna set this to about 60 thousandths, I think. I'm gonna tune it up to pitch here in a minute, but I wanna get it at least kind of close. It's, it's hitting the fretboard now, so. Use these thumb wheels to raise up the bridge on either end. All right, so that's pretty close. Now let's go ahead and get this dude tuned up to pitch. I'm using my Peterson Strobo. Whoa, there's a five-way switch in here. Why do I not remember this? Okay, now that we've got that done, I wanna double check the height because the way this works, if as it comes under tension, it might pull down on that a little bit more. So let's just double quick check the height and make sure it didn't fall any. Now, since this thing moves around, there's a couple things we need to keep in mind. This bridge actually rocks back and forth. There, the holes surrounding the pins are actually shaped like an hourglass. And so the way this works is it's meant to pivot back and forth. So we wanna get it in the middle, like so, so that the bridge has room to rock back and forth. So when we use the vibrato arm, the bridge can rock back and forth and there's zero string friction. It's really cool. Um, that's one of the things that makes this cool because nothing scrapes across each other. Even the nut down here moves less because we're actually just l slackening and tightening the strings. It's everything's just kind of, it's, it's really neat. I, I think it's really cool. But what I'm gonna do is we're literally gonna take a tape measure. Man, that is almost dead on. Okay, so I just by chance, by eye, put this thing in the right spot. So now we're gonna take it. So I basically just measured it to the scale length on the high E. So now we're gonna take it and just check tuning. Okay, so this side, this is the tricky part. This side needs to come this way a little bit. So we literally just move it because <laughs> it's just sitting in there friction wise. more but what you don't want to do is just bend the bridge over 
you want to move it like this because you want that bridge to be in the center of that pivot point. Perfect. Perfect. All right, well, let's see what this thing sounds like. is crazy so um back in the day when i was doing these things uh i was working with a guy and we were trying really interesting wiring schemes and so this has got a five-way switch in it so it's a neck both pickups in series middle middle half out of phase it's out of phase but then we put another capacitor on it or resistor maybe inside the switch to make it to where it wasn't totally out of phase so it's still pretty smooth sounding and then the bridge this is such a cool guitar um so let's just go uh tip to tail over it i know it's kind of backwards normally we do like these are the features of the guitar but i can't couldn't remember 
I'm so I had to like go through the whole thing and like literally remember the stuff about this guitar and I remembered a bunch of details as we went along. So let me just share some features with you as we go. Um, maple neck, rosewood fretboard, uh, mother of pearl inlays, 12 inch radius fretboard. Uh, these are like medium frets. Uh, Spurzel locking tuners, because I was really into Spurzels at the time. I still, I still do like them. They're very good. Um, this has our original Dylan logo on it. Um, and of course our peghead shape is different now, uh, but that's our original Dylan logo. In fact, this logo only ever made it onto two guitars, this one and the sister guitar that was the same thing, only it was a regular Tele with no Bigsby, but it had a humbucker in the bridge just like this. Um, it's an alder body with all of these kind of custom French contours and you know, really rounded and smoothed and kind of cool. Um, it's a nitrocellulose finish on the neck and it is a, uh, type of urethane on, I, I can't remember what finish I used on this. I, I, I just don't remember. Um, obviously mother of pearl bound or mother of toilet seat or whatever you want to call it. Uh, this has got our center punch neck pickup, a flat six bridge pickup, the B16, obviously here. Um, and then a couple other kind of unique things about this is when you put a, I've mentioned it earlier, but when you, I'll sh you can really see it now. When you put a Bigsby B16, you can see that the thing has to sit super high uh, on the guitar. And so basically in order to uh, make that work, you have to put a big shim in it, like a huge one. It's like four millimeters thick or something. So instead of doing that, what we did was just machine the neck pocket to have, it's about a f six degree neck angle actually. It's really, really steep, um, but it's cool. It does make it to where you can't set, lay it flat like a normal Telecaster, um, but there you go. It's not that heavy. I think it's probably about, just about seven and a half pounds, something like that. And as you can tell, because that pickup is mounted in metal and, the whole string thing is all different. It, it does have a different sound, right? It's a different sounding guitar. It's really cool. Um, no string through because you don't need it because of the Bigsby. So we didn't even machine the string through into it. Uh, no neck plate and uh, yeah, very cool. I am really excited that this thing actually came through the shop and that it became part of, or that it is part of our history and that we got to see it again. So. Um, I probably will never build this exact guitar again, but I would love to build some more of these because I think they're really, really cool. It's just a matter of how much interest in it there is, you know, whether we could do it again. We'd probably partner with Texas Toast out there in Colorado and come up with some cool ideas and make some cool guitars if that were to ever happen again, if people were interested in it. But uh, this one in 2016 was 001. In fact, I did not serial it. So I'm going to serial it for the new owner. I told him that I would. And uh, we'll ship this thing off to him probably tomorrow. Anyway, super cool thing. <laughs> this is neat. I'm like really stoked to be able to have this in the shop. Uh, <laughs> really cool. Anyway, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, do all the things that you normally do when you watch videos, and we'll see you tomorrow for the podcast.